Exercise-induced menstrual dysfunction is something that's specific to women because only women have menstrual periods, uh, and we're going to discuss that in this video. First off, I just want to say that menstrual dysfunction does not equal infertility. That's a common myth, and that's something that is potentially dangerous for somebody who's not ready or willing to be pregnant at this time to, to think, so I want to make sure that we say that up front. All right, looking at this figure over here, we're not going to go into a lot of detail about this, but this is showing the typical 28-day menstrual cycle in women. We start with the menses, which is the period. We then go into the follicular, or the later follicular phase. Uh, we have ovulation approximately in the middle, and then we have the luteal phase towards the end. And you can see the differences in hormones. There's a lot going on here. So the hormones are driving all of this. All right? But we're not focusing so much on the menstrual cycle as much as menstrual dysfunction here. Eumenorrhea is the term used for normal menstrual cycles, which are typically occurring, uh, having a period occur every 28 days. So a restarting of the menstrual cycle every 28 days. Oligomenorrhea is the term used for irregular menstrual cycles. Uh, this, the, the definition varies. Um, this can be uh, more sporadic menstrual cycles. Uh, so it can be one is 28 days, another one's 36 days, then you have 24 days and they're kind of all over the place. Or it can be that you miss some menstrual periods and then you get another other menstrual periods. So it might be a, a missing of some, but not all, or it could be just an irregular length of time um, that is unpredictable. All right, and then amenorrhea is the complete absence of the menstrual period. This is uh, the the lack of menses. Amenorrhea is often caused by energy deficit, so too little food intake for the amount of exercise being performed. Uh, menstrual dysfunction is as much more likely in lean physique sports. There's a number of sports that fall into that. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, the actual percentage of women athletes who have menstrual dysfunction, so oligomenorrhea or amenorrhea, varies depending on the definition of oligomenorrhea. So anywhere between 5 and 66% of female athletes do have irregular menstrual cycles. Again, this depends on how you define irregular, which is the reason why there's so much range there. So even if you were to kind of cut in the middle, somewhere probably around 40 to 50% of female athletes, it's almost half, do have irregular menstrual cycles. There are a number of issues with having irregular menstrual cycles. One of the biggest ones is its effect on bone density. Bone mineral density can be increased or maintained with a proper diet and weight-bearing physical activity, uh, which is something that all women should be striving to. Men should as well, um, but it's especially critical for women because they're more likely to develop osteoporosis later in life. Um, typically, maximum bone density is achieved pretty early in life, so around 30 years old. After that, it tends to slowly drop off over time, uh, and the goal at that point is to protect the bone density you have uh, so that you don't become osteoporotic when you're older. Exercise can protect against bone mineral loss that occurs postmenopausal, so it is important for women to exercise both when they're young to build up bone mineral density and when they're older to prevent further loss loss of bone mineral density. It is important to consider the relationship between normal menstrual cycles and bone mineral density. So if we look at this graph over here, these are women who are always having regular menstrual cycles. These are women who have sometimes irregular menstrual cycles, and this is women who have always irregular menstrual cycles. So regular down to always irregular with the sometimes irregular in the middle. We have bone mineral density on the y-axis. We can see that there is a statistically significant drop-off going from always regular to sometimes irregular, and then another one from sometimes irregular to always irregular. So the regularity of your menstrual cycle does indicate the level of bone mineral density that you will have. This is driven by having an appropriate diet with the appropriate amount of calcium and vitamin D as well as calories to uh, allow our bodies to build and maintain bone minerals and having weight-bearing exercise that's going to promote that growing and building of bone minerals uh, and bone density. So so it's important for female athletes and exercising women to make sure that they are eating properly and they're not experiencing energy deficit, or especially excessive energy deficit that might lead to amenorrhea because it will affect bone mineral density. In another video, I'm going to talk about some basic information about eating disorders, which is also very prevalent among female athletes, and it's something that will affect your, your menstrual cycle as well as your bone mineral density if it's not corrected. So please make sure to watch that as well.